It's baguette time! Oh yes, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're making crusty baguette, like a baker. <laughs> when you baguette, you don't regret. <laughs> Hi and welcome to Vincenzo's Plate with the baguettes. Thank you, Anthony Silvio, the fantastic baker. He's been showing us so many secrets hmm, and techniques how to bake. And today he's showing us how to bake baguettes. Crusty baguettes. Crusty baguettes, the French way. Yeah. Mm, can't wait, mm. please show us. The first step is we need to make a pre-fermented dough. Today, the pre-fermented dough we're going to make is called poulish which means that we mix together equal quantities of flour and water with a very, very, very small pinch of yeast. Mix it together and let it ferment overnight. We're gonna allow this one to ferment for 12 to 18 hours, depending on how warm the night is or the day is when you're making this. And then tomorrow we'll come back and we'll mix that poolish into our final dough to make beautiful baguettes. We have 190 grams of cold water. 190 grams of bread flour. And then I have here some dried yeast of which I'm only going to use a tiny pinch. The first step is we need to add our little tiny pinch into the water. Then we can add all of our flour. And we just simply mix. Since we're using equal quantities of flour and water, you can see that this is quite a wet dough. It looks almost like a paste. But by the time that we let this ferment for 12 to 18 hours overnight, you're going to see tomorrow this is a very active and alive bubbly mixture. Now we just need to cover this nice and tightly and we're going to leave it at room temperature. We'll see you tomorrow. It's time to mix our final dough. Let's have a look at the ingredients we're using. We have our poolish. We have 380 grams of bread flour, two grams of dried yeast, very important that the quantity of the yeast is exact. We have 10 grams of sea salt, and optional, we have 10 grams of diastatic malt powder. Diastatic malt powder can be found online, but if it's too hard to find, you can just leave it out. And lastly, 215 grams of nice cool water. Firstly, let's add our poolish into the water all of it into the water. You can see it's nice and gassy, so it's actually floating on top of the water there. Now it's time to add all of our yeast, our malt, all of the flour, and lastly, add your salt on top of the flour. We add the salt on top of the flour so that it doesn't come in direct contact with our yeast and kill that activity. Now we just need to simply stir all of these ingredients together in the bowl. Continue stirring the ingredients together until they are all combined and the flour is nice and hydrated. Now that you've combined the ingredients together and all the flour is hydrated, simply cover the bowl and we're going to leave this to rest just for about 15 minutes to allow that flour to continue hydrating. And then we're going to get in in just a moment and start to mix it by hand. This step of resting the dough is really, really important. And it's actually going to make kneading the dough by hand in a moment much easier for you. So be patient and allow the dough to rest. Okay, it's been 15 minutes. Now we're going to remove our dough from the bowl onto the bench. And you can either wet your hands or use a bowl scraper if you've got one of these. And we're going to take you through how to do the slap and fold method, which is how we're going to knead our dough. Before we start to mix the dough, I want to show you, if I pull some of this dough out, can you see how the gluten strands in the dough are a little bit uneven, it's not very smooth, and you can see that it's actually breaking a little bit, okay? This is an indication that our dough is under mix. So now we're going to mix the dough and we'll do this again at the end to show you what it's meant to look like when it's properly developed. Before we start mixing the dough by hand, we're going to dampen them. So I've wet my hands a little bit and now we're going to do the slap and fold method. Here's how we do it. 
We scoop our dough off the bench and with our slightly wet hands, I'm going to slap the dough forward, pull at it, and then fold it all the way over, okay? Now I'm going to turn my hands this way and pick the dough up from the side and return back to the starting position. Again, slap the dough forward, pull at it a little bit, and then fold it over. And we're going to repeat this for the next few minutes to begin to develop the dough's gluten. Let's do it. Continue to slap and fold your dough for the next few minutes until the dough is nice and tight and it builds that beautiful gluten development. Now that we have been mixing the dough for a little while, it's time to check its development. We can perform the window pane test that we did earlier. Just by pulling the dough out between our fingers gently, we wanna see that the dough is nice and shiny and strong, elastic but also extensible. And can you see that you can see through there? It's a very, very thin film and that's a lovely window pane. Now that our dough is beautifully developed, we're going to shape it into a nice tight ball and then we're going to pop it into our bowl to ferment for the next two hours. To roll this into a nice tight ball, I'm just moving my hands in this motion, okay? And I'm touching the ball with my right hand, then my left hand, then my right hand, then my left hand, pushing up against the dough, making the skin of the dough nice and tight so we get this beautiful, tight, plump ball. We're going to grease our bowl with a little bit of olive oil, just a touch, just to help the dough not to stick. Then we're going to grab our dough, place it into the bowl, cover your bowl with plastic wrap, and we're going to leave this to ferment at room temperature for a good two hours. And at the one hour mark, we're going to uncover again and give the dough a fold on itself to reinforce the gluten structure within the dough. Our baguette dough has been resting for one hour so far. So let's uncover it. You can see it's increased in volume. What we're going to do is we're going to take this dough and with a nice damp hand, just gently come underneath, pick it up, stretch, and fold it over itself. Turn the bowl 90 degrees. Again, stretch, fold over itself and do that twice more. So you've got all the sides are nicely folded over. Nice and gentle. You're also spreading the olive oil. Yeah. And that's going to make a really nice tight dough once again. Because as the dough rests, it becomes very loose and extensible. So by folding it, we just reinforce the gluten development in the dough. So let's cover this once again. And we're going to leave that for one more hour, at which point it'll be ready to divide and to shape. Now our dough has been fermenting at room temperature for two hours, it's time to divide. Let's have a look at our dough. Looks beautiful, it's increased in volume, it's nice and fluffy, exactly what we want. Okay, let's pop our dough onto the bench nice and carefully. Beautiful. Now it's time to divide our dough into the smaller pieces. Today, we're going to divide them into 200 gram pieces each. Um, at the shop, typically a baguette dough would weigh 350 grams, and that's because they become really nice and long, but we can't fit them in our domestic ovens at home, so that's why we're gonna make a smaller weight and make a little bit of a shorter baguette so it can fit in everyone's oven. So cut a piece of dough, Gently move it over to a digital scale and keep cutting until you've got 200 grams more or less. Place that aside. So now that we have the dough divided with no flour on the bench at all, okay, we're going to now pre-shape the dough. What we do is we grab our pieces of dough and just fold them over each other a couple of times till it becomes a little bit more plump and tight. And then just like before, we can start to round the dough off into a nice little round. 
Doesn't have to be perfect at this stage, we just want a nice uniform shape. Now that our dough is nice and pre-shaped, we've brought some of the structure back into the dough and they're nice and tight. Before we final shape these though, they need to be allowed to rest for 10 to 15 minutes so the gluten can relax again and then we'll get to final shaping them. Dust just lightly on your bench with the flour and now we're going to take one of our pre-shaped doughs and flip it upside down, okay? Little bit of flour on your hands. What we're going to do is pick up the baguette on each side and just stretch it out a little bit. Place it down. Now we're going to take the top of the dough and we're going to fold it towards us about two thirds of the way down the side of the dough, just like this. And just use a little bit of gentle pressure on that edge to make sure that the dough sticks. Now we need to turn the dough 180 degrees. So turn it around and we're going to do the exact same thing. We take this top edge here and fold that towards us two thirds of the way down, pressing just gently so that the dough sticks. Now we just need to add the finesse to the shape. So what we do is we remove all of the dry flour. Otherwise, if we try to roll on top of flour, it's not going to roll properly, it's just going to slide. Starting in the center, a little bit of pressure, and then move your hands apart and apply more and more pressure as you get to the ends to make that beautiful tapered edge. Now we're going to lay our linen cloth over the tray, dust generously with flour so that our dough doesn't stick. And now we're going to place our dough onto the floured linen tea towel. It's important this smooth side on top, that's going to be our presentation side. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip it upside down and you can see that seam that we closed earlier on, that line that's running through the center there, that's now facing up. Let me show you what we do here with our towel. We pick up from the sides and lift it up so that there's a little bit of a separation between each baguette. Make sure you place them down with the seam side facing up and they're going to sit right up against each other so they give each other a nice warm cuddle. Now we're going to cover it completely. I'm going to place another tea towel on top so that we can put them to bed, okay? And then we need to leave them to final proof now that they're in their shape for about 45 minutes to an hour until they're nice and supple to the touch and then we can place them into our hot oven. To get a really nice crispy crust on your baguettes, it's important that you bake on a hot baking stone. So now that your baguettes are starting to proof, it's time to preheat your oven with this baking stone in the oven set at 240 degrees Celsius on the conventional setting, which is the top and bottom element heat, not fan force. And you need to preheat that oven nice and hot for at least half an hour before you bake. So I've got my baking stone preheating in the side of the oven. On the other side of the oven, I just have a tray there getting nice and hot because once I place my bread into the oven, I want to throw a little bit of water onto this hot tray to create lots of steam and quickly shut the door to capture as much of that moisture as possible. Our baguettes should be final proof, so let's uncover them. You can see they've expanded and plumped up. When I press them, you can see how the dough slowly bounces back, slowly springs back, and that's a good indication that they're ready to be baked. If I was to touch them and they sprung back really, really quickly, then that would tell you that they need longer to proof, okay? They're underproofed and they've still got a lot of life, a lot of energy in them. So just leave them for another 10 to 15 minutes. But as it is at the moment, the dough is springing back just ever so slightly. So these are beautiful and ready to bake with. If you have a pizza peel at home, you can use a pizza peel, but if not, you can simply use an upside down tray to slide your baguette off the tray into the oven nice and easily. To prepare our tray, we dust with some flour. We get our baguettes. Remember these were placed onto our towel here with the seam side facing up. So I move it out, 
get my thumbs underneath, carefully, carefully twist it over and then gently pick it up and place it down. Dust with a little more flour on top. To slash our bread, we're going to use a baker's lamb, which is the tool that we use to properly score the bread, okay? Now I'm going to come on top and very gently, but with a quick motion, do three lines going nice and straight down the length of the baguette, making sure that each time I stop and then I come over and I overlap the line. So I'll show you exactly what I mean. Overlap, 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 overlap. There we go. So I have a few tablespoons of water ready to dump onto our hot tray to create the steam. I've got my baguette slashed onto the flour tray ready to go. It's time to bake. Here we go. Dump the water onto the tray and very quickly close the oven door. Bake for 10 minutes initially, then we're going to remove that tray with all any uh, residual water that's on that hot tray. Then close the oven door again and bake for another 10 to 15 minutes until our baguettes are beautiful and deep, deep golden in color. It's been 10 minutes. Let's have a look. Fantastic. I'm going to take the tray out of the oven and just leave the oven door open for a couple of seconds. And you can see that that steamy environment has allowed our dough to expand beautifully. Now we're gonna close the oven door. Look at these beautiful baguettes, they're ready. They're so deep, deep golden. They look absolutely stunning. Look, oh, yeah. look at that crust. That's the right sound. Oh. That's the sound we like. Oh, guys. Right. Let's see. The big reveal, let's have a look. Oh, beautiful, look at that lovely open crumb structure. Lots of gassy bubbles, it's gonna be lovely and light when you eat it. And the crust is still nice and crispy. Absolutely stunning. Anthony, I'm gonna cut a slice for me because you're not worried about me. All you're worried about is to eat. What are you about? It's the best time of the race. Don't you trust me? Mm. It's good enough. You don't need to so try. It's moist. It's <laughs> crunchy. I get a bit crunchy and moist at the same time. Mm. Such a small bread. Mmm. Wow. Mmm. I need some extra virgin olive oil on top. Mmm. Mmm. Listen to this. Listen to this. Mmm. Mmm. Put some mortadella in the middle. Mm. Mm. A little bit of tomatoes. Yeah. Some mozzarella. Mmm. Mmm. Please, guys. Mm. Write a comment. Mm? Yeah. What else do you want? Let us know what you think. Tell us, what would you put inside your baguette? What that's type what of sandwich would you make? That's right. That's what we want to know. Mm. What type of sandwich? Mm. Write a comment below. <clears throat> Follow us on Instagram and subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> Thank you so much. E ora si mangia the baguette, Vincenzo's plate. Thank you, Anthony. Ciao. You're welcome. Great man who shared us, who shared all his secrets with us. So tomorrow I can go and open a bakery and I'll call it Anthony Silvio Bakery. <laughs> okay, ciao.